I guess I should explain. I'm not exactly your typical 16-year-old girl. Oh, I seem normal enough, I guess. I don't do drugs or drink or smoke. Well, okay, except for the one time when Sleepy caught me. I don't even have anything pierced except my ears, and only once in each earlobe. I don't have any tattoos. I've never dyed my hair. Except for my boots and leather jacket, I don't wear an excessive amount of black. I don't even wear dark fingernail polish. All in all, I'm a pretty normal, everyday American teenage girl. Except, of course, for the fact that I can talk to the dead. I probably shouldn't put it that way. I should probably say that the dead talk to me. I mean, I don't go around initiating these conversations. In fact, I try to avoid the whole thing as much as possible. It's just that sometimes they won't let me. The ghosts, I mean. I don't think I'm crazy, at least not any crazier than your average 16 year old. I guess I might seem crazy to some people. Certainly the majority of kids in my old neighborhood thought I was. I've had the school counselors sicked on me more than once. Sometimes I even think it might be simpler just to let them lock me up. But even on the ninth floor of Bellevue, which is where they lock up crazy people in New York, I probably wouldn't be safe from the ghosts. They'd find me. They always do. I remember my first. I remember it as clearly as any of my other memories of that time, which is to say not very well since I was about two years old. I guess I remember it about as well as I remember taking a mouse away from our cat and cradling it in my arms until my horrified mother took it away. Hey, I was too, okay? I didn't know then that mice were something to be afraid of. Ghosts either, for that matter. That's why, 14 years later, neither of them frightened me. Startle me, maybe, sometimes. Annoy me? A lot. But frighten me? Never. The ghost, like the mouse, was little, gray, and helpless. To this day, I don't know who she was. I spoke to her, some baby gibberish that she didn't understand. Ghosts can't understand two-year-olds any better than anybody else. She just looked at me sadly from the top of the stairs of our apartment building. I guess I felt sorry for her, the way I had for the mouse, and wanted to help her, only I didn't know how. So I did what any uncertain two-year-old would do. I ran for my mother. That was when I learned my first lesson concerning ghosts. Only I can see them. Well, obviously, other people can see them. How else would we have haunted houses and ghost stories and unsolved mysteries and all of that? But there's a difference. Most people who see ghosts only see one. I see all ghosts. All of them. Anybody. Anybody who has died and for whatever reason is hanging around on Earth instead of going to wherever it is he or she was supposed to go, I can see. And let me tell you, that is a lot of ghosts. I found out the same day that I saw my first ghost that most people, even my own mother, can't see them at all. Neither can anyone else I have ever met, at least no one who will admit it. Which brings us to the second thing I learned about ghosts that day, 14 years ago. It's really better, in the long run, not to mention that you've seen one. Or, as in my case, any. I'm not saying my mother figured out that it was a ghost I was pointing at to and gibbering about that afternoon when I was two. I doubt she knew it. She probably thought I was trying to tell her something about the mouse, which she had confiscated from me earlier that morning. But she looked gamely up the stairs and nodded and said, Uh-huh. Listen, Suze. What do you want for lunch today? Grilled cheese or tuna fish? I hadn't exactly expected a reaction similar to the one the mouse had gotten. My mother, who'd been cradling a neighbor's newborn at the time, had let out a glorious shriek at the sight of the mouse in my arms and had screamed even harder at my proud announcement, Look, Mommy, now I've got a baby too, which I realize now she couldn't have understood since she didn't get the thing about the ghost. But I had expected at least an acknowledgement of the thing floating at the top of the stairs. I was given explanations for virtually everything else I encountered on a daily basis, from fire hydrants to electrical outlets. Why not the thing at the top of the stairs? But as I sat munching my grilled cheese a little later, I realized that the reason my mother had offered no explanation for the gray thing was that she hadn't been able to see it. To her, it wasn't there. At two years old, this didn't seem unreasonable to me. It just seemed, at the time, like another thing that separated children from adults. Children had to eat all their vegetables, adults did not. Children could ride merry-go-rounds in the park, adults could not. Children could see the gray things, adults could not. And even though I was only two years old, I understood that the little gray thing at the top of the stairs was not something to be discussed. Not with anybody, not ever. And I never did. I never told anyone about my first ghost, nor did I ever discuss with anyone the hundreds of other ghosts I encountered over the course of the next few years. 
What was there to discuss really? I saw them. They spoke to me. For the most part, I didn't understand what they were saying, what they wanted, and they usually went away. End of story. It probably would have gone on like that indefinitely if my father hadn't suddenly up and died. 